I want to speak a bit about the unbelievable loss or the ptira of Rabbeinu Moron, Reb Chaim Kanievsky. So in this week's parsha, at the tragedy of the death of Nodov Va'avihu B'nei Aharoin, the Pesach says, Va'acheichem kol beis Yisroel Yisrofu es asreifo asher soraf Hashem. And Rashi writes, Mekan shitzaroson shel talmid hachom emuteles al hakol leis abelbo Everyone needs to mourn the pain and loss of Talmid HaChachamim. And the Baraturim adds on Talmud Chochem Shemais Hakol Nas and Kroivov. Everybody feels like a brother, like a sister, like a relative. And everyone should feel as if a personal loss. Libi Oimeli. Yivkunas Asrei Fasha Soraf Hashem. The emphasis is on Sreifa. And why is that? When a building is demolished, bombed, torn asunder, at least you have the bricks, the stones, the wood. You could try. You could try to build it back. It's not going to be the same as it was. But you're left with building materials. You could try to rebuild. But when a house is burned to ashes, nothing is left. You can build nothing from ashes. So sometimes the Talmud Chochem passes away and there are others that could take his place. Maybe not exactly the same, but but we do find an expression in Chazal, it's in the Yushalmi, and in Bereshis Rabo, Parshat Tzadik Aleph. Chochem Shemais, Mi Yitain Lonu Chalufosoi, Mi Yitain Lonu Tumurosoi. There are many Gedolim, many tremendous Marbitzei Torah, Paiske Aloha, but there was only one Rab Chaim, and there is no other. And Rab Chaim, one could really say, Chochem Shemais, miyitin lonu chalufosoi, miyitin lonu tumurosoi. Yifko es asreifo, asher soraf Hashem. We're left with nothing. We have no one that could step in and take his unique place. Miyitin lonu tumurosoi, miyitin lonu chalufosoi. And let me share with you my Reb Chaim. And I want to mourn, not Reb Chaim of 15 years or 20 years, Reb Chaim the Manig, Reb Chaim the Tzaddik with hundreds of people waiting in line just to get a brocha. I want to talk about Reb Chaim of 90 years. Not 15, but 90 years. Reb Chaim the Masmid, there was no masmid like him in our time. Loi posik pume megerse. Reb Chaim the Yadin, Reb Chaim the Sage, Reb Chaim the, the Giant of Torah. We had a Leviah like no other. We never saw a Leviah like this in the past. And we very much hope we'll never see one like this in the future. And it is unlikely that we ever will. More than a half a million people. And one wonders, why did everybody feel so close to Reb Chaim? He wasn't a man of words. He never spoke in public, never. That is very uncommon of a godl of a manik. He never spoke in public. And he wasn't a great Maggid Shia. He didn't give Shiurim. He never said the Droshas. Never. And he wasn't a man of words. I visited Reb Chaim many times, but I can't say I knew Reb Chaim. I don't think anybody knew him. I had a very extremely close relationship with Reb Leib. We spent many hours together. 
and learning in Ashkofa. I had a very close relationship with my Rebbe, with the close Bagir Rebbe. But with Reb Chaim, it was in and out. You said what you needed to say, you heard what you needed to hear, and you were out of the door. That You couldn't take his time. He wasn't a man of words. So why does everybody feel like a personal loss? Every Yiddish in Hashem is connected to Torah. Whether you're aware, whether you're not aware, and sometimes that spark, that spark of Ahavis Torah is hidden in the depths and the recesses of one's heart, of a Yiddish heart, of a Yiddish Hashem. But we all yearn to a connection to Torah. And Rab Chaim was Torah. There's an amazing line in Sefer Hakona. Sefer Hakona is a very early Sefer. It is not clear whether it was composed in the days of the Tanoam, in the days of the Meroam, or the early Ga'inim. And when Sefer Hakona talks about Talmud Torah, he says, Ezehu Talmud Chochem, who is defined as a Talmud Chochem? Not the one that is Boki B'Shisha Sidra Mishnah, and Tosefta, and Sefro, and Sefri. What a definition. And Rab Chaim, one could say, His nefesh was nefesh ha He and Torah were one. Uba ahavoso yishge tomit. Mesoy's high of the oxygen in his lungs, his very essence was Torah. He learned and learned and learned and learned. Reb Chaim was Torah, and Torah was Reb Chaim, and that is the connection everybody felt. Many, many of the people listening to this year had the privilege, the schus of visiting Reb Chaim. But in all honesty, anybody that's going to tell you we spent a half hour with Reb Chaim is either lying or hallucinating, living in an imaginary world. He spent that type of time with his rabbits and with his children, with very, very few people. He couldn't, because he had no time. So I hope we remember Reb Chaim, the Masbid, Reb Chaim, the Godel. He was an unbelievable bookie. Kala Torah Kulu, one could say, was Shogar al And now, I knew, I knew Gedolim that remembered Shas. But most of them, maybe all of them, had a compromised Havana and Savora. It is the nature of the human mind. Those people that have photographic memories usually lack depth depth of understanding of Avona Amkos Yashrus Reb Chaim's Yashrus and Havona was not compromised, not at all his awesome Bikiyas was combined with an unbelievable Yashrus his Svorim are amazing Svorim, amazing godless so Reb Chaim was a combination a certain Shlemus the crown jewel of Reb Chaim Svorm is the Derech Amuna on Seder Zeroim. But I, I learned decades ago, Reb Chaim Al Masechet Kutim, Reb Chaim Al Masechet Avodim, Reb Chaim Brice the Malachas Amishkan. The Svorim that very few people know, Sugis that no one learned, Sugis that no one learned, Le'omkom, only Reb Chaim. Because Reb Chaim learned Kolotoy Rekulam. And he learned Kolotoyra Kula Ba'amkus, Biyashrus. And those are amazing for him. And Rab Chaim deals with, with sugis that have no precedent. Almost no one dealt with these sugis before him. He has a huge seifa on Egla Arufo. Who wrote on Egla Arufo besides Rab Chaim? And Rab Chaim has a perush on Yushalmi. And I see this as a, an unbelievable godless because. That Sefer is so that Tzimtzum, and it proves the L'Shem Shemayim of Reb Chaim. Reb Chaim wrote a parish in Yerushalmi. It's a portion to perish. Tamtzis midoiseyem shel gedoyle achroinim. 
And it's so easy to learn the Yerushalmi with Reb Chaim. Sofa Berura, Pshuto, Nekiyo, and that's a gift for Klal Yisroel. So Reb Chaim wrote many svarim. Vatsad hashovesh bekulom, yashrus hasvarim. And Reb Chaim Velozhener writes in a letter, Kol chachmi yisroelo nishtab choyle biyosher hasvarim. Hayosher mechaveroi godoy lehemeno. And Reb Chaim had an amazing yashrus and an unbelievable, unbelievable, unprecedented bekius and yedias. That was the godless of Reb Chaim. So the Shia today is going to be in Hilchas Mikvois. Hilchas Mikvois are the last halachas in Sefer Atahara la Rambam. And the Rambam, as most of you probably know, every one of the Yudalat Svoram and Mishnah Torah, the Rambam is Messiah, with Divrei Chasidus, Divrei Chizuk, Divrei Musar, Divrei Ashkofa. And the same, the end of Hilchas Mikvois, the last halacha in Hilchas Mikvois, the Rambam writes, Water. Water is the only thing that is malaha oda metumas aguf litahara saguf. The same applies to tumas and nefesh and taharas and nefesh. Me hadas. What are me hadas? Babakami Yudzain and additional sources in Shas. Hoi kol samalachula mayim. Ain mayim ere toiro. Toiris me hadas. And just like Water has the power to purify Metumas Aguf. Water, in my Menatoida, has the power to purify Tumas Nefesh. And I think that was the source of Reb Chaim's Kedusha. Kedusha Satoira. His Dveikas and Toira, his pure Dveikas and Toira, his total Dveikas and Toira. That was the source of his Kedusha, of his Tahara. The Rambam writes in Hilchas Asiur Bia, "Ein machshevus harayis mitzui ele beleiv shupanui min achochma, a heart that is full of chochma. There is no room for tuma, and that is why hundreds and thousands of people waited in line just to have those brief moments and get a bracha from Reb Chaim. Reb Chaim was not only a giant in Torah, but a ish kadosh." Aish Tohoyo, a tzaddik, upon which Chazal say, Tzaddik Goizav HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mekayim. And anybody that had a tzara just waited in line for those three seconds. So in later years, Reb Chaim no longer gave brochas, he gave an abbreviation, Bua, Bekitzu Brocha V'Hatzlocha. And many people felt it was an expression of Reb Chaim's sense of humor, and he did have a sense of humor. He was extremely witty. I myself had many experiences with him in which I saw a sense of humor, but I think Buha wasn't a sense of humor. It was a manifestation how precious time was to Reb Chaim. Now, what is the difference between Brocha Vatzloch and Bua? It's a second, split second. But when you have 300 people waiting in line, second adds up to second, and seconds become minutes. And to Reb Chaim, every minute was precious. It goes beyond that. When you give a person a brocha, it is only natural that he talks to you and he asks for another brocha and he asks for an eitzah and he tells you about his family. But when a person gets a buha, he knows, he knows you got to leave the room and make place for others. He knows this is not a person with whom you could just talk and schmooze. Because to Reb Chaim, every second was precious. Every minute was Binyan HaToyro. Ad Shetahei Nafshei Kshuro V'Nefesh HaToyro. Reb Chaim is now in Ganeiden. Libi Yoimeli, my feeling is that in Ganeiden, he no longer says Buha. In Ganeiden, he has time. 
Gen Eden is Lamala Min Azman. And up there in Gen Eden, he gives us full Baruchas. Baruchah, Vahatzlocha, Vachain, Vachesed, Varachami. Gedolim Tzidikim Bemisos and Yosem Mebachayim. Rabbi Chaim should be a merit Yosha for all of us because we need so much Rachami Shamayim. He will be desperately missed down here by multitudes, by Klal Yisrael, by everyone. However, Roichev Ma'arovis Sas V'Sameach Bavoy Elav Nefesh Noki V'Tzadik. Purim afternoon, some yeshiva boys came to me broken-hearted, and they asked, why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu take Rab Chaim on Purim, which is a day of Simcha? And I said, I don't know. How would I know? But my feeling is, there was some lack of simcha in Gan Eden Purim. Sas V'Sameach Bavoy Elav Nefesh Noki V'Tzadik. They wanted Reb Chaim up there for Simchas Purim. He should be a Melitz Yeshua for all of us, and we should only know Yeshua's and Racha Mishamayim.